Hello everyone, V to Z32 here. I need some minor adjustments. <laughs> I apologize. And I apologize with this damn squeaky chair. I tried fixing it yesterday. I tried putting on some WD-40. It was fine for a short bit and now it's back to squeaking like hell. And I apologize. <laughs> Anyways, um, hopefully there won't be a major disturbance. So let's see what is going on this week in the world of playing cards here on what's on deck. First of all, I'm going to look at Kickstarter. There's quite a bit to talk about, I guess. First of all, the second of seven composers decks in the series. This time it's Wolfgang Amadeus. It's nearly funded. They need just a few hundred euros to fund. By 64 playing cards, a fourth project. Um, and still early birds available for the next 27 hours at the point of this time to the point of this video at 10 euros each, which isn't a bad price. I don't know what shipping is. And you can see the seven decks in there, the composers. They just did Beethoven previously. I believe they are printed. I'm not actually sure who they're printed by. Let's see. I mean, they're nice enough. It's a really simple back design. It faces, eh? They don't do it for me. There, there's unnecessary details, an unnecessary discoloration or weathering, or the borders on the backs are actually white. And the court cards are standard. I mean, if you're going to do a deck like this based on a composer, why not customize the court cards a bit more? Why are they standard? <laughs> I mean, they modify them a little bit, but I mean, that's it. I do like the details on the faces. I just wish the borders on the backs matched, and I don't like the stoker standing out like a sore thumb. It's green for no reason. And the aces, uh, really? What is this? I guess I just combined all four aces to show you what they look like in one card. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of straight. That'd be an interesting death card, I suppose. If it was, there's coins and all sorts of fancy stuff. There's the previous one, Beethoven, which you can add on. And the next five ones, Bach in a brown color, Tchaikovsky in a Lewis color, Brahms in a purple, Chopin in a gold, and Schubert. The only one out of these that I'm not actually really familiar with. I've never heard that name before. That I admit I've never heard that name before. I've heard of Chopin and Tchaikovsky and Brahms. I think most people have and Bach and all these other names. Who the hell is Franz Schubert? <laughs> but it's uh, bluest color. Uh, the back design is the same for all of them, which I guess makes sense. But it's really simple. The back design, I guess it's not the end of the world. It's being printed by Noir Arts. Thumbs down. <laughs> I have to give that a thumbs down as well because I've never been a huge fan of Noir Arts quality. They had a couple of decks that were decent quality, and then they went backwards for some reason. <laughs> Anyways, um,. Family of the partnering with Byworthy in Australia. Moving on to some crappier decks. <laughs> I'm sure. If we can get them to load up. Well, actually, not this one. This one isn't bad. It's the Triora decks from, uh, from Nemesis, I believe it is. Yes, Nemesis Factory Cards, who were kind enough to send me the last decks. Maybe they'll send me these ones as well, if I'm lucky. 15 thousand euro gold though is a massive goal and I don't know if they're gonna fund. There's also a tarot deck and a Ouija table. It's all about oracles and tarot and stuff like that. Being fulfilled by Murphy's, printed by Legends. Um designed in Italy. Fifteen Euros for one deck. That's the Atropa Belladonna. There's the Tetura Stramonian and then there's their Lenormand Tarot Cards, the Bagiri, Iron Man Tarot cards. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
Um, the artwork isn't bad. It's a one-way design, but it's a nicely detailed back design that, you know, I have no complaints about, aside from the one-way, I suppose. But, I mean, I understand it. It's got the lunar cycle on there. And it also has a bunch of words which are not in English, from what I can tell. <laughs> there's a black one, definitely not English. So there's a red, there's a black, and then there's this one. So the Belladon is red, Stramonian is black. That features scenes from a Sabbath. Interesting. Aha, huh, that's the court card. So interesting, the custom. We could perhaps use a little bit more color, <laughs> in my opinion. Nice custom pips. Yeah, I definitely would prefer to see a little bit more color in the court cards. They're nice enough. Um, and whatnot, and nicely designed. But it just feels like the sketches and like they're incomplete. When I see something like that. Uh, these are the Jokers, apparently four different ones, two per deck, which is interesting. In this case, I don't mind the Joker having a red face or a black face because it has borders to match the rest of the cards, so thumbs up for that. The Leonard Man has 52 cards plus the traditional 36 Lennermand cards and, and 16 extra cards or something I'm not entirely sure. Oh yes, by Claude Davy, who I know from that just on social media. Um, those are interesting cards, Lennermand cards, not normally my cup of tea. I think it's interesting that there's a Ouija table. Or is the tarot deck though? Is that supposed to be a tarot deck? Because it's not. I feel a little bit misled because it's supposed to be. It says tarot deck, but I don't actually see a tarot deck. Um, it's an okay deck. Here's the previous deck stream, which I believe I have reviews up on. And again, special thanks to them for sending that my way. Moving on. Man, it's going to be a long video compared to last week where I just went. They didn't have time, I just kind of raced through it. Moving on! And it's taking forever to up. Bicycle, the Stilt Copper Edition deck is back. It's not gonna fun. It's got 800 bucks, 801 to be exact, out of an $8,000 goal. Not sure how they got that one. <laughs> um, 12 bucks each is an okay price. If it will load up, that would be fantastic. Of course, they have other editions as well that they hope to produce by the well suited company. <laughs> it's a nice enough back design, interesting custom court guards. I don't hate it at all. Um, I think this, as we see here, these wooden cases. Like, nobody want, who would want a single deck engraved wooden carrying case? Nobody's going to use that. It's just a unnecessary item. And then this display case, plaque, as they call it. Again, I don't think too many people are going to be interested in that, particularly for a deck like this. Maybe, maybe not. But, um, yeah. I like the Joker. It seems based on a Joker I've seen before. Court cards aren't bad, and this stage is nice enough. It's an interesting deck. I do feel like maybe they could do more with the court card figure. Like it feels like there's a lot of white space on those. The back design is nice, simple enough, classic looking, I suppose. There is a uh, stretch goal at 400% to unlock a gilded edition. That's not happening, buddy. Not even close. And why four? Hundred percent. That would mean forty thousand dollars Canadian. That would mean thirty six thousand dollars US. Currently, they're at like ten percent of your goal. They're not going to fund at this rate, unfortunately. 
I and I don't know why. I don't know why they're having some shit for getting funny, but it just wants. I'm not sure. Moving on, slow hands playing cards. Dedicated to magicians, carters, and gamblers by Kier Gomez, who is a fellow reviewer. For some reason, every reviewer now wants to make their own deck of cards. <laughs> hey, I'm guilty. I did that before. Don't ask. I don't have any available. It was a very limited print run, and it was not very successful. <laughs> this one should fun. I, you know, I tried, you know, communicating with him via like Instagram. About perhaps reviewing a deck, a prototype, and never heard anything. I guess he doesn't want me to review it, he'd rather do it himself, which is kind of understandable, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an okay deck. I don't know what the hell he means by slow hands or why that's his brand. He's going with that, why he came up with that. And he's, he's, He's got like a snail thing going on here. <laughs> it's an interesting design. It's a one-way design because of this centerpiece. I'm sure that's intentional for magic. And I think it's actually a mark deck as well. It could be wrong, but it wouldn't surprise me. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. Yes, the source material is a bicycle rider back. So that's where he was inspired. And it was designed by Nick Misko. I don't know who he is, but <laughs> printed by USBC, premium stock, traditional cut. It is a subtle one way back for magic application. You know, it's a nice enough deck. It's one I'll be getting on later on, more than likely. Starter's edition. Oh, good. There's going to be other editions. The Aces page, very simple. I get the snail with the slow hands thing, but I don't get what slow hands is all about. Jokers are based on standard joker. <laughs> um, standard faces with some modifications. Because, I guess. Yeah. Moving on. It's, it's not a bad deck. It's not an exciting deck, I suppose you could say. Speaking of exciting, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland Fiend Point Guard, which is by uh, ASVP Shop. I know nothing about them. That concerns me a little bit. In the UK. Okay. Um, interesting artwork on the faces and the backs and the tuck. It is funded. Each court card, uh, each card has a different image on the faces, different characters. Um, sure, I think that's an interesting concept. It hasn't been done before, as far as an Alice in Wonderland theme deck is concerned. Not usually my cup of tea, but in this instance, I don't hate it. I'm more of a let's keep the figures to the court cards type of guy. All the aces have Alice. Doing different things. The Jacks feature the Knave. Queens feature the Queen of Hearts. Which should only be on the Queen of Hearts, technically, not the other Queens. And the Kings feature the King. Okay. It's an interesting mirrored back design with the blue borders and the blue borders on the faces. Interesting color. I don't know who's printing it. It says it's on 250 to 300 GSM laminated card stuff. The smooth glossy finish. Apparently they plan to have these dispatched March 1st. We've got the ball roll rolling. Apparently they dispatched over 100,000 orders online last year all over the world via their website. But what do they know about creating point cards? <laughs> I don't know. Four pounds for one deck, seven bucks Canadian. <laughs> uh, thumbs up for the price. I don't know. And that's on the early bird. It's still 87 out of 200 available. Eight pounds for one deck in the regular price. I don't know what the quality is going to be like, actually. 
concerned for me. I'd love to know who the printer is. Got other Alice in Wonderland projects or products. Still don't know who's producing it, nobody seems to know. <laughs> now, with it, I have my reservations about that, but yeah, it looks like they put in the effort. Next we have Highborn Playing Cards by David Frampton, first project for the Bat Brothers. Nice Ace of Spades, I would say, what I'm seeing. There's a Gold Edition and a Platinum Edition. Nine pounds for the one, twelve pounds for the other, no early birds apparently. I will say that artwork in the Ace of Spades reminds me of another deck that was recently at uh, the bad design of another deck that was recently on Kickstarter. Hmm. Just a little bit. I'm not saying it's a complete ripoff or anything. Absolutely not. Just reminds me of it. I forget the name of that deck. It was a casino branded deck of some sort. I have a review on it too on the artist proof I just don't remember the name. How exciting. Um court cards are they're interesting, they're completely custom. Three hundred pounds for one platinum edition deck, a uncut holographic authenticity sticker and a signed certificate of authenticity. Soccer, nobody's pledged for that one. Three hundred pounds for a deck number three out of a thousand and three out of fifty for the uncut seat. Nobody's gonna pledge for that. That's ridiculous. Um especially when you look at this artwork, it's okay, it's completely custom. But what I'm seeing is repetitive court cards. You got the same figure for all the kings with different facial hair and hairstyles. Same with the queens, same with the jacks. Also, not really liking the goatee. It's not very majestic. Um, and the bat design, it's nice enough. It's pretty simple. I never understood why people feel the need to throw pips on their bat design like every freaking deck. It just, I never understood that. <laughs> uh, it's not bad though, it's a nice chuck piece from the looks of it. Let's start with, there's the Platinum Edition, which has color to the faces, in blue. Um, not exactly so how those are Platinum colors. They're going to be printed by USB-C. And yeah. Is it going to fund? Absolutely not. <laughs> not with a 19,000 pound goal. It's not going to fund. It's a massive goal. And it's just not going to happen. Boring. You know, some massive support. But right now it hasn't gotten that support. Then we got Steampunk. Cleopatra playing cards. Rise from the ashes. Are you sure it's not supposed to be Cleopatra? Completely misspelled. Because <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. It's from Colleen Howell. I have my concerns about any creator who's a first time creator from Hong Kong. I would not support them. There's so many of these guys and I don't trust any one of them. Eleven dollars Canadian on the early bird for one deck. It's interesting enough I suppose. The back design is very minimalist. <laughs> very unexciting. And the faces, I guess it's not Cleopatra, it's a bunch of insects and skulls for some reason. It's interesting enough, I just feel like the back design lacks artwork and I'm not really feeling the faces. I mean, A for effort, but it doesn't really excite me. And I don't know who's producing it. And it's an illegal project. 
cards are repackaged by hand from the last remaining 653 sets of cards. And there is no risk in production in terms of transportation, blah, blah. So it's a tech that's already produced. They will be reported. <laughs> I won't snag this stuff like that. Moving on, Tenebris. Only guards, again, not doing too well in terms of funding. A lot of projects seem to be struggling. Five days to go, it's not going to fund, absolutely not. It must have been a very short project. This artwork that I see on the Tuckers reminds me 100% of an albino dragon deck. It's by Four Hogs, Ludi Booster, who needs a boost. <laughs> Not really feeling that. Look at that artwork. Ugh. 13 bucks though for one deck is not a bad price. The pack design is interesting. Very one way though from the looks of it. Which could be wrong. I'm just not feeling that. The weird figures. Yeah. I like that they mentioned on there who it is. These are definitely it's the same figures. Same type of theme, I believe, are those decks that I'm thinking of from Albino Dragon. I forget what they're called, but I'm pretty sure it's the same kind of demonic figures. Don't know who's producing it. I'm. Let's see. Let's see. No, I no idea who's producing it, unless they're self-producing it, because they do tabletop games, apparently. It is on Fallen Angels, I guess. Absolutely not. Moving on. This is taking longer than I would have liked this video. <laughs> yeah, the Rocket Deck. Point cards based on rockets and SpaceX. I'm pretty sure using SpaceX yeah, would be a legal issue. It is nearly funded somehow. Don't ask me why. It's not very exciting. It's just got a bunch of information on the faces. The tuck base does not look good. It's not something that uh, collectors would be interested in. But somehow they got a lot of backers. Obviously, it's not the card collector group. More than likely, it's obviously not the cardists or magicians. Very unexciting talkies. Very unexciting printing. It's 310 GSM, 290 microns, whatever that means, and 100% PVC plastic. Bridge size as well, apparently. Um, but I like that they got a timeline, a plan for when they plan to get everything done. That's always, you know, a thumbs up. Solid, you know, planning. Um, and I don't know if they have SpaceX on the deck itself. But I would think that would be an issue. I don't see what the back design is. Ten bucks for one deck on the early bird. And there's still twenty available, which is kind of odd. I'm just not feeling it. I guess that's the back designs in the background. It features three different eras of rockets. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting, but no. No, thank you. Moving on. Void playing guards. Which is somehow very well funded. Very well funded. Don't ask me why. It's by Four Corner. First project. I don't know who they are. Scott Black. Apparently from the UK. Uh, I think I've seen these ones on Instagram, so it's not surprising that he's got supports. Three-dimensional look on the aces. 11 pounds for one deck, which is nearly 20 bucks Canadian. Absolutely not. He's modified some of the pips, as you can see in the cards, which... How very exciting. And it doesn't even look good. You can tell it looks like it was hand-drawn, those pips. Uh, it's not very exciting. <laughs> And the court cards are standard, again with weirdly modified pips. The 
like some ad cards. There you see a cloud case, which is interesting. Don't waste Siri. I hate that it always pops up. <laughs> um, and in the back design, I don't actually see it. I guess that's the back design. I just saw. Oh yeah, that's the back design. It's horrible. Horrible one-way back design. I can tell you right now, not one of these backers, or very few of them, is a collector. These are all going to be cardists. And other random people. <laughs> it's a horrible deck, in my opinion. Absolutely horrible. And then we got Speaks, which is an autism awareness deck. I'm not sure what it's going to look like. Aside from this, yeah, it's an interesting back design. The puzzle piece is obviously very one way, but it's not terrible. It's a big goal, $11,000 US. It's nearly halfway there. Is it going to fund? Probably not, <laughs> I would have to say, unfortunately. It's 15 bucks US for one deck. Put it by Carter Monday under Slimline Stock. Entry within B9 Finish. Sit by Yammer Warehouse. I do like that they've customized the faces. It's pretty nice. I don't know who exactly is behind this. Dave Jordan Whitehead, whoever that is. Um, oh god, why is Daniel Madison involved with this? <laughs> that just destroys the whole thing. <laughs> For me. Oh boy. <laughs> They've used those puzzle pieces and colors for the pips, which is interesting, except it does another thing that I don't like, and that is makes it so that every pip is the same color scheme, which makes it hard to identify, but maybe that fits well with the uh, theme. It's obviously good for fanning and cardistry, as you can see, four-way fanning deck. I like that. The court cards are nice. It always is one I would probably look at getting later on. They're modified or based on Carter Mundi court cards, which is not something you see that often. I One thing I will say is these faces really do not look like they fit on those court cards. The bodies, especially these jacks, <laughs> they're horrible. They're pretty horrible. They need to modify or make them better. They just kind of, some of them just look weird. And also, I don't know who these people are or why they're on this deck. Why them? Who are they? Does it say here? Okay, it's real people affected by autism. Thumbs up for that. Thumbs up for that. That I uh, appreciate. Although, again, for me, I don't know who these people. It doesn't add anything to me. For me, it doesn't do anything for me. Okay, so the pips are just one modified on each card, which isn't bad. Nice aces. You know, I don't hate the stack. Thumbs up for, you know, the thought behind it. And raising awareness and stuff like that. You know, thumbs up. I'll give him thumbs up. Is it going to fund? I don't know. We'll see. Moving on. We got... This is a relaunch, apparently, from what I can recall. Yes, it is. Thank you. Millis Yanis. Make 100 book and poker playing cards. It's nearly funded. I don't know what their original goal was. It's a horrible one-way back design, in my opinion, with... Somebody on it. I don't know who it is. Weird figures that seem to have no rhyme or reason. It's on the 80th anniversary of a war. Okay, so it's based on a war by Bugatta. <laughs> Same name. I guess that's supposed to be some soldiers that you see there. Ten bucks Canadian for one deck. Interesting that it's from Canada. Only ships to certain countries. Bit of a miss, okay. I don't know who the hell that is or what that has to do with war, <laughs> but that's what the back design is based on. Standard faces on the number cards. Court cards have 12 custom figures inspired by vintage posters. Hmm, interesting. 
now that I see it in that respect, it's you know it's interesting. It's a one-way James Bond-esque <laughs> back design, very one-way. With the insignia of the International Brigades in the center. I just don't know necessarily if that is what I would be looking for in a deck that's it's about war. Um, I don't know who's producing it. It says it's FSC Premium White Stock, 120 G's paper. And yeah, no idea. Moving on. Two-way play werewolf playing cards. They don't even have a proper name. I'll get werewolf playing cards. Two-way. That is absolutely horrible artwork. Very repetitive. The playing cards look exactly the same. Well, almost the same. Just uh, the weird hands are different. <laughs> also, it looks more like a cat than it does a werewolf, at least on the hearts. Or spades. See, there's another problem. I think that's a spade, but it looks like an upside-down heart that's flat. 96 bucks Canadian right now out of a $473 roll. Yet another Hong Kong creator, W Poker Company. You'd think they would make a deck that is more favorable for poker based on their name. 20 bucks Canadian for one deck. Hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Those are, it's just horrible. Horrible artwork on the court cards. Horrible spade pips. Horrible number cards. <laughs> is that supposed to be a 6 or a 9? Oh, look, it's a 69. <laughs> um, no, just absolutely not. And look, the outside of the top case, I don't see anything going on, but the inside has artwork. And I don't know what these circles are on the southern side, but. And there's four different colors at least of a top case a white, a gray, a gold, and a black. No, absolutely not. This is horrible, 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 horrible. Then I mentioned this one last week. I'm going to mention it some more. It's still here. It's apparently funded, barely. It's the Dark Element playing cards, which is just a absolute ripoff of the Dark Deco playing cards. If you don't believe they exist, I have a review on them from about five years ago. And they're available in various card of magic shops to this day. This is a complete ripoff. I reported it. They completely ignored it. Um, I reported it to RSVP Magic as well. I'm not get a response. I will try again. Um, but this is absolute bullshit. This should not be happening. This should not be there. Kickstarter is dropping a ball. And as a result of Kickstarter, I'm dropping you. I will very rarely be backing any projects on Kickstarter going forward. I have backed hundreds of projects on Kickstarter. I've been scammed way too many times. I'm tired of the bullshit. And I'm done. With Kickstarter, for the most part, I may back the art project here and there, but for the most part, I'll just get the decks later if I get them at all. This is just, I'm done, and I encourage other people to do the same. Let's boycott Kickstarter. Moving on, uh, I think I was going to mention some of the other projects here. Noodlers by Darren Lee is 60% funded 22 years ago. You know, that's about it, I think, that I wanted to mention. Bridge House relaunched. It's not going to happen again. Sovereign from Petolia Equine is very well funded. Nearly $100,000. That's all Kickstarter cares about. So many of the money, right? <laughs> um, and yeah, that's about it, I think, to mention here. Let's move on. I noticed these at the fact, I don't recall if I mentioned them before. Zone playing cards. V2 in pink. How exciting. It's from Bokeable, obviously. It's not even on their website yet. Um, if it ends up on Kickstarter, I will definitely be reporting them. <laughs> because it is a 
apparently available already. And it's also available in yellow. If I can get it to load up. Why is this such a pain in the butt? I don't know. I already saw this last week, but I don't know if I mentioned it. I don't recall if I did. I did not. Come on. There we go. How exciting. I did Snackers V2 Adults, I mentioned briefly last week. Blackberry Snackers. 3,000 decks. They're available ten ninety five right now. You know, they're nice enough. Uh, obviously, I got one. And then, Fairy 11, I had a bit of a surprise release. I didn't even know about it. Somebody mentioned it to me, and I immediately went to Instagram and checked it out. And it came out on Friday. It's the Monarch Mandarin Edition, just in time for the Chinese New Year. Happy New Year to the Chinese, or perhaps not so much for them, all things considered. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting recolor of the Monarchs. I really don't know if they're going to be doing this every year. The Chinese New Year. I kind of hope not. Um, because then it gets a bit ridiculous. It's not bad. I'm obviously interested to see what it looks like. Yes, I still need to review the last one, the Royal Edition. Um, it's a tribute to the stunning festivals and beautiful traditions that coincide with the coming of the Lunar New Year in China. So, yeah. It's not like it's a, uh, you know... Year of the Rat thing or Year of the Horse thing. It's just a Chinese New Year thing. So I don't think it's going to be something that happens every year. But they could do other cultures, I suppose. How are the reviews of this deck already? You haven't even gotten it yet. It just released. It hasn't even sipped and people are doing reviews. Good lord. Wait until you get the damn thing to review it. You don't see me doing reviews of something before I get it. But uh, it's only going to be available this week or while supplies... Uh, are available, um, which is interesting. It's pretty limited, apparently, but they don't say how many have been produced. It's only going to be available until 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday, January 1st, or while supplies last. So make sure you get it if you're interested. And then... Let's check my email quickly. And also let's look at this. Oh, Latin Quarter was that deck I was at before. <laughs> um, so, Sakura. V2, I do have the first edition. I don't know if I'm going to be getting this one. It's the winter edition. I don't hate it necessarily, but I do hate this. For some reason, they decided to put Sakura across the back, making it a one-way design. Not to mention the color makes it a one-way design, but seems unnecessary to put the name on it. And then I don't know what the faces look like based on this. I don't recall. Oh yes, there's something else to look at. Birdway's website. And I guess I should double check elsewhere as well. Um, also, very quickly, the uh, Bicycle City Skylines Los Angeles deck is real, that's an expensive ass deck. <laughs> I'll obviously pick it up. It's bicycle branded and I got the rest of the series and obviously I can get it wholesale. Why on earth did they make it a one way design with Los Angeles across the middle? That's absolutely ridiculous. Hopefully that's an ad card, but I don't think so. Um, outside of that, it's pretty nice. I do feel like they're charging a lot just because it's got a foiled embossed tuck case. And because it, it's only a thousand decks, they're really kind of abusing that for their own financial gain. Like both playing cards that .com is doing, in my opinion, there's no reason these should be 25 bucks on the retail price. Absolutely not. 
And then um, we got Juice Joint in black and red from Mike Ben McClary, who also is the one behind that Latin Quarter deck, by the way. Um, it's obviously a casino themed deck, and you know, I'll probably pick them up <laughs> knowingly. Standard faces, as you might expect. I mean, I don't hate them. Premium press stock, bleh. premium press stock, traditionally cut based on these silver nugget decks. Interesting. So, yeah. There's that. And I'm going to double check the United Artists. This is what I want to talk about in the third way. You uh, Eva Moore and Paradis decks available for pre order. Also, you can get them through his uh, Patreon if you want to do that. But of course, to do that, you got to pay a subscription, but you will get the deck with the subscription. But it might be cheaper just to get the deck. <laughs> um, come on, load up. They are already out of stock of the Eva Paradis. They also had the original deck available as a Friday package. But they do have the Noir available for 18 bucks. He also had a code. I forget what it is, unfortunately, but you can probably find it on United Cardists uh, to save 5%. Whole 5% is really nothing, anyways. <laughs> um, but there was free shipping as well, so actually it kind of helped. It's a nice deck, nice enough. It's an alternate version of the original EVA deck, a dark edition. Makes sense. Suggests for mature audience only, very discussion advised. <laughs> All the court cards are female. And then you see it's essentially the same as the previous deck, the original deck, except that it's black faces, recolored. Also, there's some nipples. Um, but it's basically recolored from the original deck. Now much else is different, and it's it's black, obviously. They're nice enough. I did pre-order it. It's a you know it's a decent enough price, especially with the savings on shipping, since I was a backer. The free shipping and the code I should mention are for people who backed one of his other projects on Kickstarter recently. Um, it's gonna be coming early spring. The Paradise, Paradise version, Paradise, which is out of stock, 49 bucks. Why? Because it's an experimental box with metallic golden paper and magenta foil and embossing. Less than 350 available. If it's still experimental and prototype is, the buyers are 350 produced. <laughs> um, it's a nice enough tough case and whatnot. Maybe it will send me one. I don't know. Probably not. Even just a tough case, but <laughs> um, it's expensive for just a different tough case, and I'm not doing different tough cases. Oh. Yes, something else I need to mention as well. <laughs> this is why I'm checking my cards in case I've forgotten about something. Oh, there's that one as well. There's apparently an eggplant edition of the Jasper's deck. Yeah. Gonna be expensive and 
not really available. Oh, we'll get this deck. Why is this on the new decks? I don't know. Come on, people. I guess we will look at the uh, Jasper's Eggplant Edition deck very quickly. I know this video has been a long one. I apologize. Almost at the end. There it is. Eggplant or Pink coming January 24th, which is two days ago. At the new deck order. .com. Disappointed that there isn't a Wiener Seed Vegetable on the back design. Or what is this? Fontaine? <laughs> Speaking of Fontaine, there's a bunch of different versions I've seen recently. Um, so this is Infinitum from Elephant Point Cards coming to Kickstarter this week. Looks pretty nice. They're going to be put to buy the USB-C for the first time is doing that. Interesting artwork. Very custom. So make sure you check it out. I'm not entirely sure when it's going to be released. There will be a shipping cost, I think, for everyone, which is unfortunate. So apparently, these are now available. From Poker Start 52, although he apparently didn't list them, but they're the bicycles of tan and painted yellow, which I got from Magic Square. It might have cost me a little bit extra, but I did also get a different deck that they had that I wanted. The bicycles of tan decks, which I have a review on the original three, which were these pink, blue, and green, and now they have orange and yellow. Moving on, here's the Jasper's Eggplant deck. Eh, 18 bucks. It's still available, which is exciting. Um, I don't know what the faces look like. <laughs> there probably is no faces, knowing them. It says the Cardistry deck, double-sided. There is faces. I might get it. Come on. Not asking too much for you to work. Yeah, there is faces. Who knew? Come on. I don't want music. I don't know. I'm going to get it or not. <laughs> we'll see. And moving on, one last thing to mention. I forgot. Come on. Gatorbacks. Came out last Monday, I believe it was. I think. <laughs> uh, in rose gold and silver. There they are, rose gold and silver Gatorbacks, beautiful foiled decks. Currently at twenty bucks each, they were on sale for the first twenty-four hours for fifteen bucks each. Apparently there was a discount code which I found out about afterwards. Thank you very much. But yeah, that is it for this week. Comment, subscribe, and don't you think we'll see you next time? More thanks for watching.